Watch, kind of good Bojo, Heidi Burns Indigenous, Mississauga and Donjaba, Michisagi Territory and Da. Welcome to the third and final episode of the 2020 Pine Tree Talks webinar series, Putting Minoman on Your Table. Each episode of the series has opened with the Minoman song sung by Dorothy Taylor, accompanied by a slideshow of the Minoman plant throughout its growth cycle. So far in the series, we have learned about the timeless intergenerational relationship between the Michisagik Anishinaabeg and Minoman and the ecology of Minoman and the importance of it as a keystone species in the Great Lakes ecosystem. In this webinar episode, we're joined by three Michisagik Anishinaabeg Kwe who are gonna talk about the revitalization of the Minoman beds and the cultural and nutritional health benefits of Minoman. We're also gonna learn how to prepare a few Minoman dishes and how food sovereignty and access to healthy, sustainable food sources like Minoman is addressing the diabetes ep epidemic within Michisagi communities and restoring overall health and wellness in Michisagi territory. Michisagi territory is covered by Treaty 20 and the Williams Treaties. On behalf of Trent University, Cheney Wenjak School for Indigenous Studies, and Pine Tree Talks organizers, we offer our gratitude to our three speakers today 
to the Michisagik Anishinaabeg as the first caretakers of this territory for their teachings of the earth, water, and all our relations. And Chimi Gwech, a big thank you to all of you for joining us from all across Northern Turtle Island. May we honor each other, our environment, our treaty relationships, and the teachings we received together today. There's gonna to be a live Q&A throughout the webinar, so please be sure to submit your questions and comments throughout the talk. I'm so very excited to be introducing our speakers who are joining us from Curve Lake First Nation. To begin with, we'll start with a recording from Minoman Harvester, community educator and advocate for Michisagi food sovereignty and food security, Damon Wutang. Followed that, following that, we will have a discussion with diabetes wellness specialist and land-based programming facilit facilitator for the Indigenous Diabetes Health Circle, Autumn Watson. And we're also joined by food skills facilitator, chef and caterer, Janice McHugh. Chimi Gwech to each of you for being with us today to offer your knowledges and experiences with Monoman. We'll get started with our discussion now. Anin Damon Dijnikaz, Curve Lake and Dunjaba. My dad is James Wietong and my mother is Crystal Wietong. I'm here to talk to you guys today about wild rice and what it means to me. For me, food security is about having enough food and the right kind of food. So food that feeds your mind, body, and soul that's available to you. I think that a lot of people have like food insecurities and Minoman is a way to balance that out for people. Like you don't need a lot of money to gather the wild rice. It does cost a lot in the store because of the work that it takes to gather it, like to, to get it there. But um, it's just so rich and and every and more than that, <laughs> you know, that uh, that makes it. And it's like I don't know. I feel like it's underutilized. I feel like people don't. It hasn't been valued as great as it should be because of its history. So I don't know because it was a food source that was trying to be taken from us. We couldn't see the value. Like Canada couldn't see the value in it as a food bank for our own nation, like for the entire nation. Food security to me is about having food, having enough food, and having good food that feeds your mind, body, and soul. Well, your spirit. <laughs> um, historically, the government systematically destructed our, our food sources. They took down animals and plants and things that we used in order to survive and sustain ourselves in a meaningful way. and. That was to create dependence on them and for a loss of power and control on our part. Uh, I like to use the analogy of a bad domestic relationship where um, you're isolated and they take away your independence in order in order to create a need on, or to create a need on the government. Um, as a Nishnaba woman, I feel like this is pretty oppressive. So yeah, in terms of what does food security mean to me, um, I'm lucky to be raised with a lot of my traditional knowledge. Um, I was raised on wild meat and moose meat, deer meat, fish, frog legs were my favorite when I was little. Um, and also like the processing of them, so cleaning the animals and treating them with respect and all that goes along with that. Putting your tobacco down before you uh, take a life and such. So my name, I also I was raised with like lots of berries and things like that. My name is Damon, that means strawberry in Ojibwe. Um, my brother's name is Minoman, and my sister's name is Takib, which is spring water. So we are all named after sacred foods. It helped us to form the identities that we have of ourselves and helped us to remember who we were historically. Well, for my closest community, which is my family, Minoman has always been um, a part of my life and something I re can remember from when I was a small child. So my, f my dad didn't start wild rising until he was in his middle ages, but he brought it back to us and it's something that we've practiced continually since then. I've also shared it with my uh, six-year-old girl, Layla, and now my unborn child. 
So for me, it's about, it's not only about the wild rice and consuming the wild rice, but it's also about the practice of gathering it. And so there's like sounds that go along with it, like the falling into the canoe or the popping while it's roasting and, and the smells and the way they change as you work with the wild rice that creates a richness in your, in your mind and in your life. Um, also like working with the wild rice over time, you learn about how labor intensive it is and you gain value for it because of that. Um, it needs to be turned every day. It needs to be, gathering is the easy part. It's all the work that comes after that that gets ready for food that is a lot of hard work, but it's also good for your body and good for your soul. Minoan plays such an important role because it connects me to a pre-colonial time. So a time before my people had so much trauma. And now I can use it to help teach people or connect people or reconnect people to who they are and their relationship with the land, their food, and indigenous people. There's even like there's also many native people that have lost their connection to the land for whatever reason, whether it be the 60s scoop or um, residential schools or just this disruption in passing knowledge on that's that that people want to know and they want to feel the land and they want to know where they come from or what their people were doing a long time ago. And so Minoman plays a role in reconnecting people to who they are and that's super valuable to me. Also now in these times like the COVID times people are starting it feels to me like people are starting to um to s consider their food sources more more carefully um whether it be with closing of borders or like um backyard gardens, urban gardening, like what can we grow here? What is, makes up, um, what's a good idea for using the space that we have or the climate that we have and making nutrient rich food. And so for me, Monoman is a great way that not only native people, but all Canadians and North Americans for that matter can, can share in its value. It's uh, intrinsically connected to my identity through being a part of my day-to-day -day life, um, as well as a part of my me and my people's history. So I was raised uh, knowing that you are what you eat also. So a little bit of what you eat is carried in you. Um, for me personally, I went through a wandering stage in life and it was having the monoman to come back to that helped establish, like help me to understand who I am better. Like I just feel like it's such a big part of me and such a big part of my life and such a valuable part of my life and something that goes deeper than the society I live in. And it's like my dad says that each grain of rice out there is one of your ancestors. And so to go out there and work with the wild rice is like being a part of your family or knowing like your ancestors and it's connected to food sovereignty like just by being a rich source of food that helps people in like I said their mind body and their soul so you're it's a it's part of a healthy lifestyle gathering the rice and then processing it and then eating it creates like a lifestyle that's hard working hard sleeping and you know I say it gives you long long hair and <laughs> beauty <laughs> Yeah, um, but for me personally, Menomina is a key to food sovereignty in this area. Like, Rice Lake was supposed to be uh, the rice bowl of North America, right? So it's somewhere where rice prospered, did really well, and it wasn't until we we destructed it that uh, that it had its ebbs and flows. Um, it's something we could bring back to the area and feed a lot of people if that's what we if that's where our priorities were at. That was such a wonderful video from Damon Weitung, who provided us with her experience of growing up as a Minoman harvester and what Minoman means to her family and community. It was just beautiful. Miigwech, Damon. Um, 
we'll move on to our discussion now. And um, we'll, we'll uh, welcome Autumn and Janice uh, to the panel now. Um, and we'll begin with Autumn. Uh, Autumn, you work as a diabetes wellness worker with the Indigenous Diabetes Health Circle. We've learned in earlier episodes of the series that Minoman has a high nutritional value and is very important to the Great Lakes ecosystem, providing food not only to us, but also provides food and habitat to many other species like fish and geese, um, which we also eat. My question for you is, could you share a little bit about your work and a little about the relationship between health and access to traditional foods like Minoman? Mm -hmm. First, I'd like to take a moment to say miigwech to Trent University for providing me with an opportunity to be a part of the amazing Pine Tree Talk series. As well, to miigwech to Damon, you truly are an inspiration for our community. So, Anin de Gwagi Indigenous, Shkikimong Indigenous, Washapchi Bin Dodem, Mississauga Indigenous, Kwa Indau. So, my name is Autumn Watson, and I'm from Curve Lake First Nation, working with the Indigenous Diabetes Health Circle. Uh, it truly is an honor to work with the Indigenous Diabetes Health Circle. IDHC is like one big family promoting health and wellness among Indigenous communities throughout Ontario. Now even further since uh, we've gone virtual. As the diabetes wellness worker for the Eastern region, I have had the opportunity for the past seven years to deliver land-based programming as a gentle approach to health promotion while ensuring the transfer of traditional knowledge and cultural revitalization that is important to one's identity, sense of belonging, connection, and wellness. Uh, some previously delivered land-based programs have included birch bark basket making and an understanding to blood pressure, sweet water ceremony and blood sugar testing, black ash basket making that weave our physical, mental, emotional and spiritual health. Combining diabetes wellness messaging with respect, with respect to both traditional and Western methods has a way of resonating with community. This style of programming has encouraged individuals to develop a relationship with the land, or more specifically with the laws, land, air, water, and sun. Over the years, we have worked with the youth and students from Curve Lake First Nation and many other communities to learn about where does our food come from? How does our food grow? Together, we share how our food, the plants and animals, need the land, air, water, and sun to grow. These laws keep our own spirit healthy and therefore has the ability to create spirit within the foods that are grown from the land, such as Monomen that is being honored here today. Land-based foods are real. Their spirit can help us to become strong and prevent diabetes while keeping us healthy like our ancestors and the plants and animals that surround us. IDHC has had the privilege of working in partnership with Black Duck Wild Rice with respect to increasing awareness on the health benefits of Minoman and the importance of recognizing Indigenous rights to preserve, harvest, and sustain Minoman today, tomorrow, and for future generations. In September, Black Duck Wild Rice held Minoman K when a gathering in Curve Lake that brought together community to increase awareness, share teachings, partake in ceremony, and care for the Minoman in our lakes. Another beautiful initiative that IDHC was a part of was with Art of First Nation. Last year, we were able to combine language out on the land with the Kingston Indigenous languages while roasting, dancing, winnowing Minoman that was harvested by the community. Both of these community-driven land-based programs have a way of connecting community. They not only honor the gifts of Mother Earth, but they have the ability to help us maintain that sense of balance, physically by allowing us to be out on the land to keep our bodies strong, mentally by providing us a sense of responsibility and reciprocity, emotionally by taking time for us to bond with family and community, spiritually by honoring and renewing our connection with the land. Each year, the IDHC hosts an annual, our traditional food event, which brings together speakers from all over Indigenous country. Guest speakers reveal the vital relationship that exists between access to traditional foods and overall health. They inspire awareness of land-based foods while demonstrating how Indigenous foods can make us healthy, as they are not only nutritionally dense, but there is also a spiritual connection. 
food truly is medicine. Circling back to the question about access to traditional foods, to be honest, they are all around us. It really is up to us to take the time to connect with creation in our own ways whether it is a hike to enjoy the abundance that the land has to offer, or if it is to harvest some good medicine, such as manolmin. The laws of creation have a way of promoting well-being and healing. Physical health and nutrition are intertwined when one connects to the land-based activities, foods and medicines that they offer. Mother Earth truly is a balanced health care system. Jimmy Gwetch. Jimmy Gwetch Autumn for such a beautiful answer. Um, I'm curious, you mentioned uh, about a couple of events that have happened recently, and I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about what those community events look like. Um, you mentioned one in Curve Lake and you mentioned one in Ardock First Nation, and we know that there's a rich history there. So I was wondering if maybe you could um, talk a little bit about that experience, being part of the community and helping facilitate. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Heidi. Uh, you're exactly correct. There is really a unique relationship between uh, Ardock First Nation and Curve Lake First Nation. Mm -hmm. I personally um, can't elaborate too much, but working with uh, James and, and learning from him, he speaks um, eloquently about the relationship between Ardock First Nation and the, the rice here in Curve Lake and how many years ago he traveled to the community of Ardock First Nation uh, to gain some of those those teachings to be able to bring it back here to Curve Lake. So it truly was an honor to be able to uh, participate in um, an initiative that was pulled together in Ardock First Nation with the Kingston Indigenous Languages Nest. And this was an opportunity that brought together uh, community members of all ages uh, to not harvest the rice as that it was previously done by members of Ardock First Nation, but to, to roast it and dance it and uh, win away it. And uh, then uh, most importantly, gift it back to community. So, you know, ensuring that community has access to uh, the, the traditional based foods. Now, in terms of the K win that was uh, hosted here in Curve Lake in September, as you would know, that was during COVID times. And I was absolutely amazed that we were able to bring together elders, community members, um, and have ceremony all within COVID. So it was quite uh, it was quite interesting to see that, you know, the canoes would go um, out into the beds and when they came back, they were sanitized. Damon, you know, was roasting uh, in the cauldron and, and community members had an opportunity and it, we were still able to follow all of COVID protocols. And one would think that during these times of isolation and, and um, times of, um, I guess, safety that's, that this community-based gathering wouldn't be able to happen and it went off without a hitch. It was absolutely beautiful uh, to be an experience, uh, to not only experience that, but to, to be a part of uh, the summit ceremony of planting Manoman back into to our mix. So, Jimmy Gwach, Heidi. Jimmy Gwach, Autumn. Um, I attended that event, uh, socially distanced, everyone was masked. Um, I remember how beautiful it was and the weather was perfect. Um, it was it was really, really lovely to get together. I remember the elders um, separated from the rest of us speaking to us through on a microphone, through the speakers. Um, yeah, it was beautiful. And I think that um, that's that's something so special about Minoman is that it is um, it's a community food. We require community to harvest, uh, community to process, community to gather and feast, and to share the knowledge. Um, I also remember at that event uh, there was all ages, uh, babies, and elders, and everyone in between. Um, so that's something else that I really love about Minoman and the um, intergenerational relationships that happen um, throughout the harvest season. So yeah, Chimi Gwetch for talking about your experience working in the community and um, Janice, you work as a frontline health educator as well as a caterer serving traditional foods and you've prepared a special cooking show for us to, to watch today. Um, I'm wondering before we air that uh, for everyone, could you tell us a little bit about your show and what we're gonna watch? 
Sure, I'll um, be glad for having me here today. Um, so I chose three different recipes to highlight um, how versatile monomen is. And because it is high in protein, the dishes um, that I have used are filling and satisfying. Um, plus a little bit of uncooked monomen goat. Um, the dishes I chose um, to make were a monomen pilaf, uh, monomen nabib, and puff monomen. Uh, the recipes are simple using local and traditional ingredients. And the best part is about the recipes that you aren't using all your pots and pans. So there was little cleanup for me to do afterwards. I was also, um, I chose these recipes too because I was inspired by Sean Sherman, um, who everyone knows is a sous chef. Um, I used his recipes and techniques for a catering job that I did a while back, techniques when I'm cooking. Um, one of them is that he uses um, cedar uh, to his dishes. Um, the cedar provides amazing flavor, but also provides health benefits as well. And when I pick my cedar for the dishes, I offer my sema and I give thanks and explain why I'm using that cedar. Miigwech. Miigwech, Janice. So we'll, we'll air the show now and then we'll come back to our conversation um, in a few minutes. Anin, Janice McHugh, Nadish Nakaz. I'm a proud member of the Curve Lake First Nation and I'm here to show you how you can cook beautiful monomen three separate ways. First, I'll be making a monomen pilaf with assorted mushrooms and squash. The second recipe will be a monomen naboob, which is a soup with cedar braised beans. And the third will be puffed monomen as a garnish for both dishes. Okay, so now we're gonna cook the monomen. Uh, one cup of rinsed uh, monomen will equal four cups of cooked monomen. And this will be enough for the first two dishes that I'm gonna make, the pilaf and the naboob. So we add that, we're gonna add a sprig of cedar and it's gonna give it some extra flavor and it'll make your house smell just wonderful. And then four cups of water. We're gonna bring this to a boil. Okay, so now we have our pumpkin cut up. I have it in a cast iron pan and I have um, coated it with a little bit of sunflower oil. And I'm gonna add a little bit of smoked maple salt to it. And it's gonna go into the oven at 350 um, for about 20 minutes, about the same time as the monomen is cooking. Now we're gonna chop up our various mushrooms. We have shiitake, we have um, cremini's, and we have white button mushrooms. So for the rest of the ingredients, we're going to use some beautiful local garlic, um, my homegrown sage from my garden, and we're going to use half of this shallot. And now that our squash is cooked, I'm going to take it out of the skillet and I'm going to use the skillet to prepare the remainder of the pilaf. Okay. okay, so now we're going to add our assorted mushrooms to the pan. The pan is still hot from the oven and I also turned it on and added a little more oil. We're going to add our garlic and chopped sage and our chopped shallots as well. We're going to cook this up for about five minutes until the onions are translucent and the mushrooms are browned a bit. So now we're going to add our cooked monomen to our skillet with our mushroom, shallot, and sage. We're going to spread that around. 
I'm going to add a half a cup of vegetable stock. Now you can make your own vegetable stock if you save all your scra um, scraps from your vegetables and then boil it up. We're going to let that cook until most of the liquid has been absorbed. And when that happens, I'm going to add the squash back into the pan along with a tablespoon of maple syrup. So I have these uh, crushed juniper berries that I am going to add to the dish. It um, provides a little bit of a peppery flavor to it. Okay, so now we're gonna add our baked uh, squash. I'm gonna toss that around. Most of the liquid has absorbed from the vegetable stock. And then we're gonna add about a tablespoon of maple syrup. Again, mix it up well. And there you go. There's your Manoman pilaf. And now we're going to make our nabib. We already have our cooked Manoman, we have our chopped mushrooms. I made some cedar braised beans prior. We have some more sage. Uh, we're going to use a leek instead of a shallot and add some potato and carrot. And we're going to boil our potato and carrot in some with some cedar. And we're going to use that water uh, to add to the broth, which is the leftover broth from the cedar braised beans and some mushroom broth. So now we're going to um, pre-boil our potatoes and carrots with the cedar. It helps um, move the soup along faster. So I'm just going to add enough water just to cover the vegetables. And we're going to boil that till they're just al dente. Okay, so now we're going to add our leeks to the frying pan. If you notice, I'm using the same frying pan. Uh, cast iron skillet, I should say, that I used to put the squash in to bake it and to make the pilaf. So, not so many pans to use. Add, and we'll add the mushrooms. Give that a whirl in your sunflower oil. We're going to soften that up like we did um, previously for the pilaf. And so our potatoes and carrots, they are finished. I'm just going to pick out the cedar and I'm going to drain the juice into the broth that I had already there. I'm going to add the potatoes to the pot. We're going to add the cedar braised beans. And then we're going to add our lovely mixture of leeks and mushroom and sage. Okay, so now we're going to add our manoman we cooked previously. 
and then our mixture of um, the cedar braised bean broth, the potato and carrot broth, and mushroom broth. That lovely color. We're going to mix it up. We're going to turn it on to reheat everything in probably about 10 minutes. The nabu will be finished. So now we're going to make our puffed manomen. We've rinsed our manomen really well and we're going to put it in a nice dry cloth and we got to make sure that it's really dry because if you put wet manomen into a hot pan with oil, it's going to sputter at you. So what we do, we get a pan good and hot and we're going to add a tablespoon of the sunflower oil. Got to be very careful. Just want enough to coat the bottom of the pan. It's almost sort of like making popcorn. And then you're going to add a one cup of your manomen. And you're going to toss it. And as you see, it's already puffing up like popcorn. I'm going to put the lid on, give it a good shake, and keep on tossing it. Depending on your stove too, if you want to rub it back and forth on the element or not, I have an induction stove so I don't want to do that. But look at how quick that is. Look at how beautiful that is. We have a few more kernels to uh, pop and we're done. Okay, so now out of the one cup of, of manomen, you have four cups of cooked manomen. We have the uh, manomen pilaf, we have the manomen naboob, and then we have the puffed manomen as well. So we're gonna sprinkle that puffed manomen over that bowl of delicious soup, and why not, let's put it on the pilaf as well. And there you go. Chimmy Gwetch Janice uh, for such a beautiful cooking show and sharing those recipes with us. Um, I haven't cooked my Minoman with cedar before, but I'm definitely going to be doing that from now on. Um, for those uh, watching uh, this webinar episode today who may want to cook these dishes at home, Janice has provided the recipes and they will be posted to the Pine Tree Talks website. Um, Janice, for those who will access the recipes to cook your Minoman, recipes at home. Um, could you share with us where your ingredients come from? Sure. Um, I was gifted with manomen from a friend and I'm so happy that it came from uh, Black Duck Wild Rice, um, which we all know is grown here in the community of Curve Lake. And I also have um, great connections with local farmers. Um, so the fresh produce was purchased from our community market. Um, the dry ingredients such as the beans um, I bought from the local to us and if you are looking for specialty dry ingredients um, they have um, ingredients such as juniper berries and sumac that you can um, purchase there. Uh, I did make my own vegetable broth. I um, save my scraps from vegetables that I peel and cut up and I keep them frozen in a bag in my freezer and then when I have enough I do make a stock out of it. Um, I did, however, purchase the uh, mushroom broth from the grocery store. Miigwech. It, it looks so delicious. I, I can't wait to try out uh, those recipes. One of my favorite manomen dishes is so simple, as you showed us, is the popped manomen. It's delicious. Um, I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about the work you're doing to ensure that Curve Lake has access to nutritious foods. I am so fortunate to um, be a part of an incredible team um, at Nourish. Um, the Nourish team believes that everyone has a right to access uh, local nutritious food. And we do this through our uh, unique programming um, that we offer, such as cooking, um, growing, which is our community gardens, and our advocacy programs um, that we um, help to inspire people to feel good about themselves. Um, we have eating programs such as our food box program and also our Curve Lake Market. Um, included in our eating programs is our educational trips to places such as Black Duck Wild Rice. Um, we are fortunate 
to work with James and Damon um, to bring people to Curve Lake so they can educate people on the importance of um, Minoman to our community and to have them participate in harvesting and preparing the Minoman. Um, one of my biggest programs right now is the Curve Lake Market, um, which has been running for about three years now. And we're situated on the main road um, and it is happening every 2 p.m. Um, this is the first year we were able to have the market on a weekly basis, um, thanks to funding that we have received. So we purchase our fresh produce um, from local farmers um, within our area, such as McLean's Berry Farm, um, Deer Bay Farms, which is a small, beautiful farm, uh, Waymack Mushrooms, and Molly's Acres, to name a few. So community members can purchase fresh produce at a reduced cost. As we move into the winter months, though, um, where local produce is available, we do have a local wholesaler company um, that provides us with our foods. And I always encourage our community members to ask for specific items to be sold at the market so that they get what they want. Um, we also have a program um, called Nourish Market Dollars. And these market dollars are provided to participants who attend our now virtual classes. And then they can be used to purchase um, the fresh produce at the Curve Lake Market and other markets too within the area, like the Lakefield Farmers Market and the Peterborough Regional Farmers Market. And they can also be purchased by individuals as they make a great gift for somebody as well. Thank you much. Miigwech, Janice. Um, that's, thank you so, so much for sharing all of that. We've had such a great discussion um, with uh, all three of our panelists today. Um, before we wrap up the episode, I wanted to invite um, Autumn and Janice, if you have anything um, final you'd like to share your thoughts on food security or any final thoughts that you'd like to leave viewers with, um, before we uh, before we close our episode here, Autumn, can I invite you to um, share some final thoughts with us? Perfect, thank you. And I'd like to say thank you, Janice, for providing the the market here in Curve Lake. Uh, typically, Thursdays get away on me, so uh, before I know it, uh, unless I'm heading out the road, sometimes I do forget to stop by, but it, it's absolutely an honor to be able to to have access to to healthy foods uh, here in our community on a regular basis. So to me, Gwach, for, for doing that. In terms of um, uh, food security, I guess maybe um, I'd like to encourage us to develop a healthy relationship with food. So whether that is planting seeds out on the land, uh, beans in a pot on a windowsill, if that's all we have to, to grow our gardens, to planting and harvesting minomen uh, from the water garden um, in our lakes. So uh, the reality is it, it really doesn't matter how big or small the relationship is, it's important to start that connection. And when we connect, uh, we can create um, a bond. Um, which can build pride in our accomplishments as well as provide us with the ability to share our spirit food that we have cultivated, planted and or harvested with uh, family, friends and community similar to uh, what James, uh, Damon and uh, Janice currently do within our own community. So chimigwech for that. Chimigwech Autumn um, uh, for your final thoughts. I was just wondering if I could follow up with you um, uh, in regards to the nutritional value of Minoman. Mm -hmm. So in terms of uh, the nutritional benefits of Minomen, um, it really is holistic, right? From heart health to digestive health to, you know, um, with our, our immune system as well. Um, so research has shown, uh, obviously, that uh, there is uh, no sodium in uh, wild rice. So it does have the ability to, to lower our blood pressure. Uh, it's also high in fiber. Um, which uh, really helps to, to clear out the fat cholesterol. And vitamin C, of course, uh, really important to, to generate that repair. Uh, in terms of fiber, we all know fiber is very important for our body, so it really helps with our digestive system. Um, and uh, yeah, so it, it really does have a, a wealth of, of minerals um, and antioxidants that 
uh, can help with uh, lowering uh, chronic disease. And uh, James and Damon and those who who are out on the land, uh, you know, harvesting the gnomon also uh, show the interrelationship to the physical health. So just being out on the land and being active uh, in terms of harvesting uh, really helps uh, generally in terms of our, our body's overall health. So thanks, Heidi. Jimmy Gwetch. Jimmy Gwetch, uh, you make such a good point about being out on the land and using our bodies to gather the food. Um, I have uh, personal experience <laughs> harvesting and I know how, uh, how, um, how much work it is. So yeah, definitely. And, but it's so worth it to have such a whole delicious food at the end of, of all that work. So yeah, Jimmy Gwetch for elaborating on that. Janice, I was wondering if I could uh, invite you to share any final thoughts you, you may have or anything that you thought of um, that you'd like to share with um, our viewers before we sign off. Yeah, sure, thank you. Um, so again, um, with in regards to food security, this is part of the work that we do nourish, advocate for fairness and equality and access to fresh, affordable foods is our main goal. Um, we also believe a basic income so people do not have to go without, um, you know, housing or even putting food on the table. We advocate for policy change um, as well to ensure um, that people have access to fresh local foods and that the, that includes the ability um, to harvest and share traditional foods, including monoman and game. Miigwech. Shemigwech, Autumn and Janice for um, joining me for this discussion today. It's been a really wonderful gathering with you and um, I'd like to offer some final remarks and thanks. Shemigwech again um, to everyone for gathering with us today and on behalf of the organizers, Shemigwech to our financial sponsors, Pine Tree Talks at Trent, the Frost Center for Canadian Studies and Indigenous Studies, Indigenous Environmental Studies and Sciences, Tracks, Kawartha Sexual Assault Center, and the Unitarian Church in Peterborough. She may watch to each of you for supporting this project. I would also like to express my sincerest she may watch to the Pine Tree Talks organizers for the opportunity to participate in the production of this webinar. It's truly been an honor and privilege to have come together here with uh, so many compassionate and dedicated community members and um, also to those of you joining the webinar from all across the land, especially during such a difficult times uh, that we're in. This brings us to the end of the fall 2020 Pine Tree webinar series, Monoman the Good Seed. We will close now with Dorothy Taylor's performance of the Monoman song. Until we meet again, may we honor the Monoman, our treaty relationships and all our relations. Miigwech.
Miigwech. Hanaganah.